So today we are going to do something. So today we are talking about something that I love to do that you probably love to do too because you clicked on this video and that is vintage shopping. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking more vintage. This has been something that I got a lot of um, not requests because I'm not a big youtuber at all after I posted a video about how to shop for vintage denim I thought that it would be a great idea to Talk about something else very similar that I love which is just shopping for vintage in general I have bought a lot of vintage things in my life I would like to say that at least a quarter of my wardrobe probably is vintage at this point I go downtown pretty regularly I go downtown on a regular basis just to shop for more vintage um, there's <laughs> There's a value village just around the corner from my school, so whenever I'm at school and I finish a lecture, sometimes I just pop by the thrift shop just to um, just to look around and see if there's anything that I can find. Usually when I just decide to go on fluke, that's when I find the best stuff. I don't know why, it just happens that way. So I thought that today I would talk about where I found my best vintage stuff, um, what my favorite pieces are, where I got them, why I love them so much. Shopping for vintage, thrift shopping, whatever you want to call it, that's what we're doing today and that's what we're... Actually, no, we can't do that today because thrift stores are closed. Which is very upsetting to me because I go to thrift stores on a very regular basis. You can tell it's spring because my allergies are just... They're ripe today! <sighs> My brain is not working today. So, if you want to know about my favorite vintage finds ever, keep watching. Okay, so I think I'll start. Um, I'll just start at the top because these are at the top and these are some of the pieces that I wear probably the most frequently. Out of all of the things that I've ever thrifted, this is... Um, this pile of skirts, I wear these pretty constantly throughout the summer. So, I have a couple of them. Um, this was like, I feel like an essential staple of the 90s or like the early 2000s just because um, none of these brands exist anymore. I found a couple of things by this brand. I think this one and this one are by the same brand. Yeah, they are. And it was called um, Style My Way. <laughs> so. Um, I guess that's ethical or sustainable. It's like double sustainable because it was made in Canada and I got it thrifted. So I don't know. I guess that's good. I have a couple of them and I feel like this particular like A-line maxi skirt kind of deal was something that was very popular like 20 years ago just because these brands don't exist anymore. And I wear them with different things depending on um, what I want the outfit to look like that day. So like this one for example is kind of like a low rise just because it fits me a little bit bigger. It's just a bigger skirt so it fits me kind of on my hips versus on my waist. And I wear a lot of like crop tops with like my belly exposed in these just because I think that's a super cute kind of summery look. This one I find myself wearing probably the most because I find that it's the comfiest just because it's a bigger waistline and just because I think it's got really, really nice colors. And I find that it just goes with a lot of things that I have that I use in my wardrobe pretty frequently. And then I also have this one, which is actually not a maxi skirt. It's actually a little bit um, shorter than a maxi. It's kind of like it hits me about my knees. And I find that this also looks cute. And I'd style it the same way as I do the skirt that I just showed you. It's by the same brand. It's like this really, really light kind of chiffon fabric. I like this one a lot because it has an elastic. And that's, I find, very practical. Especially because I am a person that gets bloated a lot. I think that's the second video I've talked about being bloated. Okay, this is the third one. This is from a different company. This one is very similar to the black one. It's just a little bit tighter at the top, so it fits me about here on my waist, which I really, really like. And it's a little bit longer, and it has a little bit more flow. So I find that I wear this one a lot when I'm either going shopping downtown or if I'm just kind of hanging around, just because it's much easier to walk in than the other ones. This last one is one that I love, and it's from Jacob. And Jacob used to be this brand. I don't know where it existed. I don't know if it was just specific to Canada, 
but it was a brand that existed for a long time. My mom was like in love with the store, but I found this thrifting, um, I think a couple years ago now, it's been a while, but this one I love because it's a little bit thicker and I find that this one can be elevated a little bit because it's got um, a much tighter feel and it's tighter all the way down, which I think is really pretty. And it has this really, really nice slit at the back. And then it's also much comfier than the other ones just because it's not comfier because it's tighter, but it's definitely comfier to wear because it's got like this lining on the inside that makes it soft, um, which I appreciate because these ones can get a little bit scratchy even though they're super cute. Whenever I go thrifting, I find myself buying these probably every time I go because they're really easy to find, especially in thrift stores in Toronto for some reason. And I find that they just go with so many things and so many outfits and they work for different seasons too, but I feel like they work for a lot of different things. So I find myself using these a lot in my wardrobe and they're definitely one of my favorite things that I found while I was thrifting. Okay, so next, I think I'm gonna talk about this style of dress. I haven't even taken the tag off because I just got this one. But this one is from a brand called Jessica. Um, Jessica is a brand that also made gun sacks. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that particular 90s era brand. It's called Gun Sack. They're known for like these really boho looking, beautiful, edgy kind of 90s fashion, Courtney Love kind of dresses. And this brand made them. They make really, really cute stuff. And I have a lot of stuff from them that is vintage that I wear all the time. I was thinking for a while of cutting it, but I, I don't know, I'm a little bit torn just because I really like the line right now and I might just keep the line until I get sick of it and then maybe I'll cut it. This particular dress style looks really, really good on me. So this is another one of my favorite vintage finds. I love this dress. And I got it in another color too. And I find that they're just super practical and you can dress them up and down super easily. If you put a jean jacket over it, boom, like you've got like a cute little summery look. And then if you dress it up with a pair of like super, super nice heels, a dress to wear to a wedding. So I feel like it's a very versatile dress. And I actually got really lucky. I found these two dresses. They're almost identical in the shape of them, but their fabric is a little bit different. This purple one I found on a different day than I found this coral one. These two dresses are um, one of the best things I've ever found vintage shopping because they work with so many different outfits. Okay, um, I wanted to save this one for last, but I like can't help myself from talking about it because it's probably my number one best thing that I have ever found in my life thrift shopping. So this I got last summer or two summers ago when I was downtown with my mom. Um, it's a funny story actually. We were going downtown that day because we um, we needed to get me a dress for a wedding. My cousin's wedding was coming up. I think we were leaving for London where the wedding was. We were leaving for London, I think. The wedding was in London and we were leaving, I think the next day. And I had one day to find a dress for the wedding because I had completely stalled and I procrastinated on finding one. And then I didn't find one. I was like, mom, I don't have a dress. I need a dress. I knew of this store downtown called Exile. It's in Kensington Market. It has this whole section at the back of the store where it has just formal dresses. This is probably my favorite vintage store in all of Toronto, just because it has such a wide variety. I found my favorite vintage dress ever there. Um, but I also found the dress that I wore to the wedding there and it was like pretty affordable for the amount of beading and the amount of work that probably went into this dress and how much it actually cost when it was on the rack in a store somewhere in the 90s probably but anyway i found the dress and while i was there we were kind of walking out exile switches up their clothes every month no <laughs> hallelujah that's where it was it it wasn't there before i had to sneeze the whole time i was filming the introduction it finally came I'm sorry. <laughs> it's spring. My allergies are awful. I'm having a great time. Exile does this thing where they have mannequins at the at the end of every rack and they showcase really really funny or really nice things that they found that they want to show to the people that are coming to the store and I just by fluke saw this kind of in the corner of my eye and I was like oh my god mom this is so pretty and she's like try it on just see if it just see if it fits because a lot of the time things that are on those mannequins don't actually fit me and um, I tried it on and I honest to god like I cannot explain how beautifully this dress fit me I was so lucky to find it. I don't know how I found it. It was fluke that I even walked by that section of the store and I found it. But I'm so happy that I did because I wear this thing all the time. It's just I find a very versatile 
just a beautifully fitting dress and I'm so happy that I found it. Ugh, it's so, it's so nice. You'll see it in the, you'll see it in the, over here. It's so pretty. Okay, so that's that dress. Um, I'm gonna jump into denim just very quickly. I did a whole video on denim a couple of days ago and I thought that I would just cover this one more time. Just my favorite ever jeans that I found while I was thrift shopping. A lot of the jeans that I feature in the other video, they were actually from a brand called Redone that redoes denim. They, they restructure denim in order to have kind of a modern tapered fit. But these jeans that I found, I found on Queen West in Toronto, and they're some of the best things I've ever found while I was thrift shopping. The first pair I actually did, I featured it in the other video, so I won't talk about them that much. But they are the tiniest, most like cinched jeans. Whenever I put them on my body, I just, my butt looks better, my curves look better. I don't really have any curves, so the fact that these jeans give me some kind of like waistline, is an amazing thing. It's like a miracle for me to even have a waistline because my body just goes. <laughs> so these jeans in particular are one of the best things I ever found. I found them downtown at a store called Public Butter and I just, I, I love them. I wear them all the time. They feel really lived in at this point, which I really love because it's broken in and it's not so rigid feeling and it's just so much more of a comfortable feel. If you were to buy jeans new, they just don't have the same feel as a pair of jeans like this that has been worn and loved. Um, and that's why I love pre-loved stuff because sometimes it just fits better and it's comfier than jeans that you would buy new. Another pair, these are kind of interesting and I think I need to get them taken in just a little bit because they have a very interesting fit. These are Levi's 514s um, and I found them at this really, really cool kind of, it used to be underground, it's not underground anymore, but there used to be this store on Queen West in Toronto called Black Market. They moved now, so you have to go upstairs now instead of down. They used to be in the basement of like a sushi restaurant. It used to be like this huge massive space. There was a record store and a barber shop also kind of all mixed into this really cool underground space on Queen. And this is where I found these. Everything in the store I think is $10. It's always, everything is $10. Like it's not even a sale. That's just how they do it there. And it's amazing. And I found these there and um, I thought that they were kind of cool. They were also quite small. And I was like, oh my God, I have never found a pair of jeans that are this tiny. And then I got home and I realized that the rise was not very high. So I'm not sure where these jeans or when, what era these jeans are from. But they're kind of cool, and um, and I, I thought that they would be kind of interesting to show you, just because they're one of those interesting things that I found kind of also by fluke. I was kind of just going through jeans, really not expecting to find anything, because Black Market is not usually where I find vintage jeans, but these jeans, they just, I don't know, they called my name. They were like, hey, do you want to try me on? And I didn't try them on until I got home, because they were 10 bucks, so I just bought them. But yeah, an interesting find. Another pair of really, really nice, vintage denim things that I've ever found that I'm absolutely in love with. I'm gonna wear these all summer. Are these short alls? Short alls? I think that's what they're called. I think that's I think that's what people call them. Like if you're looking for them online, that's what they're called. Anyway, these are short overalls. They just don't have bottoms. And I freaking love these things. They're really comfortable. They're super 90s feeling. Um, but I feel like you can dress them up. I'm joking, you can totally not dress these up. This is like a very casual event kind of piece to wear. Um, but I really see myself wearing these at the cottage or wearing them around the house in the summer. I just love how they feel. My last denim related piece that I'm just going to show you quickly is this beautiful, oh wait, sorry, there's two more, not one. I'm going to talk first about this beautiful, jacket that I found. Um, this I'm pretty sure I also found at Public Butter. Maybe in the same visit that I found the Wranglers, it was like a good day for me. <laughs> um, but this is a vintage Levi's denim jacket and it is beautiful. You can wear it off the shoulders, you can wear it on, you can wear it with sweats, you can wear it with like a little mini skirt. I've done both. I'll show you how I do both in a cutaway because it's just I feel like this is so versatile probably my second favorite thing that I've ever thrifted I wear this thing all the time okay last denim related thing this time I, I promise it's the last thing these shorts I found I actually don't know where I found them but they, they fit 
so well. Um, again, I've said in the I've said in the denim video that they're very it's very hard for me to find vintage jeans that actually fit my body without me having to get them taken in and these jeans I felt just fit my body so wonderfully they are 80s jeans just because I think that this brown tag they're Levi's but this brown tag is different from the orange tags that you see on a lot of other pairs of Levi's um, and this pair they kind of have an 80s style fit because they're a little bit longer and I feel like they when I saw them and then when I tried them on I was like oh my god these are my baby jeans you don't know what I mean by that, but I will tell you what I mean. In Dirty Dancing, there's a very iconic scene where Baby is learning how to dance and she's kind of dancing up and down these rock stairs in the middle of the forest on the resort that they're staying at. And she is wearing almost identical jeans and they're beautiful and she looks so good in them. And ever since I was little, I was like, oh my God, I want to look like her. So that's why I bought them pretty much because like who doesn't want to be baby from Dirty Dance? <laughs> she has such good outfits throughout the movie and I felt like that was probably my favorite outfit in that movie. And um, these denim jean shorts, they, they called to me and they called to me because I am the biggest fan of Dirty Dancing you will ever meet. So. That is all for vintage denim. I'm going to now jump into some of my leather things that I found. I'm not a fan of buying brand new leather just because I feel like it's unethical. I also feel like it's sad for the animals. Um, I think fur is kind of the same. Canadian winters get very cold and in Canada it's a super big trend to walk around with these kind of big jackets on. Everybody has a huge jacket for the winter because it gets so cold here. One of my pet peeves is that a lot of people buy, and they're super in trend right now, um, Canada Goose jackets. Like They're kind of out of style now. More people are buying these jackets called Macage. They're, they're from this brand called Macage. And they have this huge kind of fur on the outside of the jacket. And I just, I don't like how it looks. It makes me a little bit upset to see it just because I know that that animal was just killed for the mission of creating that jacket and I don't like that. I never buy first hand leather. I never ever do it. It's not a sustainable practice for animals. It's not a sustainable practice for the environment. I just think it's way more sustainable to buy second hand leather if we're going to buy leather than to buy something that was first hand killed just for us. I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little bit hypocritical to say that like I don't support buying leather and then I buy vintage leather. I just feel like it's more sustainable as a practice because I'm getting it second hand. So I have this skirt. I actually have only worn this skirt probably once, which is really sad because I should wear it more often, but like, who, like, where, where can I wear this? Like, on a regular basis, like, what event could I wear this to? I'm not sure if any event calls for green fringed suede. I don't know. I don't know about it. I feel like it's, um, it's probably an impractical piece, but I saw it and I was like, oh my god, this is beautiful. So it's like, a, it's 100% suede, this really, really beautiful kind of cowboy pattern, um, cowboy A-line pencil skirt. I love it. I, I just, I don't know. I thought it was super cool, so I bought it. The other vintage leather piece that I fell in love with the moment I saw it were these red pants. If I were to, again, think about my favorite pieces that I've ever thrifted, this pair of pants would probably be one of my favorite things. I find myself wearing these all the time. They are 100% so interesting. Look at like, so they have, they're very 80s. They're like pleated up here. They have like these pockets and then they kind of taper inwards at the end of the pants. They kind of taper inwards at the end of the pant and um, they're just, <laughs> they're so interesting. And I just think they look so cool um, because you can do so many things with them. Like I usually, the way I wear them is with, um, I wear them with Stan Smith's and like a little oversized sweater in the winter time or like spring or fall because in the winter it gets really, really cold and I don't love exposed ankles in the winter. But in the spring, I find that I jump to these a lot because they're just, it's such a cool, interesting look to have these leather pants. And then I kind of, I dress it down with a bunch of really essential kind of staples in my wardrobe, like a really nice gray oversized sweater and my Stan Smith's, or I wear like, um, 
like a cardigan and like a little tank top. I find that with this pair of pants, you kind of have to dress them down because they're just so much by themselves. They end up creating a really pretty look in the end. That was my other favorite vintage leather find. I'm gonna quickly talk about, there's like a bunch of red dresses at the bottom of this basket. Um, I just wanna quickly talk about these pants. These pants are so cool. I wear them a lot and um, I think they're, I think they are wool. So I wasn't actually supposed to wash them, but anything that I thrift, I feel like I need to wash just because it has like this detergenty smell. Detergenty is not a word. Um, so I probably should have gotten these dry cleaned, but I didn't. I just washed them. I threw them in the washing machine and I shouldn't have done that because now they don't have the same feel as they used to. But honestly, it might have been kind of a blessing in disguise because they're really, really easy to wear now and they're super comfortable. Um, so again, I do, I style them kind of similarly to the way I style these. I pair them with usually just like a sneaker or Doc Martens and then just a really plain like a t-shirt and a cardigan or like a t-shirt and a jean jacket, t-shirt and this vintage jean jacket, t-shirt and a trench, like anything really, really basic goes really well with these pants. I saw Bella Hadid um, wear them a couple of years ago, like a black and white pair. It was kind of an effortless look. I really liked how it looked. She wore them with like a really nice Henley and some sneakers and I just thought it was a really nice effortless kind of look. Um, Belle Hadid looks good in anything. I kind of look a little frumpy when I wear things like that, but I can't help myself because like, I just, I just find that like boy fashion is just so nice and so pretty and something that I love and that I have loved since I watched Annie Hall and Diane Keaton made boy fashion iconic. So these pair of pants, they're like soft now because I put them in the wash. But if you ever have a pair of wool pants that you find are just too rigid and they don't really fit your body, I would recommend throwing them in the washing machine in the dryer and see what happens. These pants were probably like $12, so I didn't feel like I was going to lose a lot putting them in the wash just in case anything does happen. And that goes for a lot of thrifting and vintage. You're not sacrificing a lot of money in order to get super, super cute pieces that you can use for a really long time. And it's so sustainable. Buy more vintage. Go thrifting more often because it's so good for the environment and they're one of a kind pieces. Buying vintage and thrifting is the best thing that I ever did for my wardrobe because now I have so many pieces in my wardrobe that are so unique and so amazing because nobody else will have them. You think that anybody else is going to ever walk around on the street with these pants on? I don't think so. I don't think so. These are like one of a kind beautiful something that I will never be able to find in my life again and so happy that I did find them because they make my wardrobe so unique and um, I get a lot of compliments on a lot of things that I buy vintage and I feel bad saying to people sorry it's vintage like you can't you won't be able to find that okay so the last couple of pieces that I'm just going to quickly talk about because this is probably a lot of talking for one video are a couple of evening dresses that I found that I have just fallen in love with. I wear them again and again to events. Um, shopping for vintage evening dresses is something that has made my life because you show up at events and they're like, oh my god, that dress is absolutely stunning. Like, where did you get that? And it's just like this beautiful one-of-a-kind thing that you own, that only you own. Um, and I find that they're just so detailed and so intricate and if you're really striving to look different than everybody else at that party, buying vintage is probably the best route to go. So I'm going to show you two vintage evening kind of dresses that I found. So the first one I'll talk about, I actually didn't get thrift shopping or I got this on Depop. Somebody was selling this on Depop for, oh, I want to say probably under $50. And it's just like, it's probably one of the best dresses I've ever invested $50 in or under. I really don't remember how much it cost. Um, but it's just this beautiful black, super slinky, super sexy, vintage evening dress. It's got this beautiful slit in the back. It has a really, really nice low back line. And I just, I find myself wearing this to weddings all the time. The last thing I will talk about is the dress that I was, that I mentioned before that I bought for my cousin's wedding a couple summers ago, um, very last minute and it was probably one of the best things I've ever found thrifting. This dress I found downtown at a store called Exile, where I found the really, really beautiful um, kind of boho dress that I showed you before. They are probably the best store to look for evening dresses, other than a store called Originals on Queen. 
um, just because they have so many evening dresses. They've really made quite a collection at the back of their store of evening dresses and they have so many that are like this. It's so heavy. <laughs> um, so this is the dress. I found it at Exile a couple summers ago and um, it's just it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever found. It was actually pretty expensive as far as thrifting goes just because it's this really really beautiful evening dress that was like curated vintage because it was from Exile and um, I just I love it so much. This beautiful cage detailing in the back. It's really slinky and pretty in the front. I find that it makes my body look really really nice. So I think I'm going to end the video there just because how long can I talk about vintage for without me losing viewers every single time I post something like this. So those were some of my favorite things that I've ever thrifted and or bought at a vintage store. Some of the things that I find I'm pulling the most from my wardrobe on a regular basis. Some of the things I find are just so good and so versatile to wear on an everyday basis. And I find that a lot of these things I pull all the time. And that's probably my number one thing in this video is that thrifting and shopping vintage is something that is amazing for your wardrobe and not just for the environment and for the planet and for combating fast fashion. It's also something that makes you unique as a stylist, as a person. Um, shopping vintage is something that I have grown to love just because you find these beautiful kind of unique pieces every time you shop and it's just so much fun to do. So if you've never gone thrift shopping before, if you've never gone vintage shopping before, I totally once this quarantine stuff is all over, I totally encourage you to go to your local thrift shop or your local kind of downtown center for vintage and I encourage you to find things like this that will make you as happy as they made me by yourself. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you soon.